A small object with mass. A small object with a mass of 0.2 kilos is attached to one end of light string and is moving in a vertical circle. All right, with a radius of one half meter. Go around and around in a circle. What is the minimum speed that the object must have at the top of the path in order for it to not fall off out of the circle? Oh, I guess I should draw this object at the top then. All right, so here we have mg pulling down. Tension is zero, otherwise it would not be minimum. And uh, nothing pulling up. Tension is equal to zero, mg, force of gravity, is our force centripetal. Force centripetal must be provided by something, and in this particular case it is gravity and just gravity, because if there is any tension in here, it would not be just force, uh, it would just it would not be minimum. Um, so then we go M V square on R. Want some velocity? Minimum speed, yep. Uh, so this is our centripetal acceleration times the mass. Masses cancel each other. And we find that V is equal to the square root of R times G. square root of 0.5 times 9.8 2.21 meters per second all right number two a rock with mass of one half kilo is tied to the end of a light string with a length of two meters. The rock is held with the string at an angle at an angle with the vertical and released from rest. As the rock passes through the lowest point with the st uh, string vertical, the speed is five meters per second. At this point in the rock's motion, what is this tension in the string? Okay, so we're going through a circle at the bottom. Here we have mg pulling down. We have tension pulling up, and together they must have, and together the sums of forces must be the force centripetal. So let's see, do, do tension, yes, tension. So tension pulls up, gravity pulls down and together they must pull up with a force centripetal which is equal to, like I said above, mv square on r. Uh, therefore tension is equal to mg plus v square on r punch the numbers in, one half kilo times 9.8 plus V of five squared divided by two. End and execute. Tension is 11.15 newtons. Um, I'll put these other bits and pieces are for other things. Uh, one half times nine, one half times 9.8. Uh, for the feet, really? 9.8. 4.9, this is for gravity itself. <clears throat> if it was not moving, then tension would be 4.9. But it is moving, so the tension is not that. Um, I'll bet 11 my point 0.15 minus, uh, minus 4.9 is one of the other answers. Yep, this is the centripetal force by itself. Um, <clears throat> right, not centripetal force. That would be uh, that should be tension by itself. And then that, the 2.7 is probably the difference. Mm. Uh. Yeah, that would be the difference too. 6.2 minus 4.9. Nope, I don't know what that is. 2.7 is something else. Not sure. <clears throat> A large disk. A large horizontal disk with a radius of 0.4 meters is rotating at a constant rate with a vertical axis at its center. A small block with mass m sits at the outer edge of the block. 
of disk. Mm. If the speed of the block is 1.2 meters per second, what is the minimum coefficient of static friction required to keep the block from sliding off the disk? Okay. So in this case, we have a force centripetal being provided by a force of static friction. Um, this is equal to mu normal, which would be only provided by uh, is only countering the weight of the object, and this therefore for centripetal must be equal to m v square on r. M's cancel each other, and what do we need? Coefficient of friction. Okay. Therefore, mu is equal to v square divided by g r. Uh, where's my b? Do to 1.2. 1.2 squared divided by begin 9.8 times the radius of 0.4 it is 0.367. So 3.7. Um, I don't know what the rest of this would be for, but I wonder if one of those is for forgetting a parentheses. Nope. Forgetting parentheses is not one of the answers. Alright. You are exploring a distant planet with a radius of r provided. Uh, you are standing at the top of a tall ladder and release a hammer from wrist at a distance of 4 meters above the planet's surface. The, the hammer has a speed of 6 meters just before it strikes the planet's surface. What is the mass of the planet? Okay, so we have um, do, 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 do. we need an acceleration. Um, v squared is equal to two a d. V naught is zero, um, and we need the acceleration. Therefore, acceleration is equal to v squared. Divide by two distances. Uh, so that's a 36 divided by uh, 2 times 4 is 8. I'll bet that works out to a nice even number of some sort or another. Well, not quite even. Fairly even number. 36 over 8 is 4.5. 4 4.5. Five meters per second squared. Uh, this would have to be equal to uh, g m divided by r squared. Um, and we need the mass, right? Yep, we need the mass. Uh, so, do do do. That means that mass of this planet is equal to acceleration radius squared divided by capital G. Um, so that's a uh, 4.5. 4.5 times 5e6 squared divided by, I don't know that Newton's constant very well. Let's go look that up. Let's see if it's in here. Newton's constant is not there. Yeah, it's most unfortunate. Um, let's try the last page of the final. The actual last page of the final. Oh, come on, really? Where is that hiding? Oh, there it is. 6.67 e minus 11.
that uh, comes out to 1.69 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. 1.7 times 10 to the 24. All right. Ta-da. All right. An artificial satellite is in orbit, is orbiting the Earth. Mass and radius provided, and with the radius also provided. What is the orbital speed of the satellite? Okay. I have a distinct feeling that is provided in the equation sheet. Let's go check. Um, that's the period. Hmm. Velocity, uh, radius, time, yep, sort of. I'll need to combine these two equations. Uh, okay. So we have that, oh, that's right on that surface. We have that V is equal to two pi R divided by T, and T is not memorized by me uh, 2 pi r to the 3 halves gm two pi r to the 3 halves divided by the square root of gm <clears throat> therefore our velocity is Let's see here, put that underneath. Uh, two pi's cancel each other. Uh, this r cancels out one whole r there. So now it's underneath. So that's the square root of g m divided by r. All right. I'm just gonna punch those numbers straight in. Keep in mind that we don't want this we don't want this radius, we want this radius. Which is awfully handy of them to have said that. A lot of times people, the, the um, exam authors will write in altitude or height above the surface and then you have to add that to the actual radius and that's, that just causes problems to people who don't pay attention. 6.67 times 10 11. 6.67 e11 minus 11 uh, times mass of the earth 5.97 e24 divided by the radius of 1.2 times 10 to the 7 that number looks awful familiar can't imagine why yeah this number is just a little bit more than that number there yep so that's a uh, 5760 meters per second. Um, that's probably low Earth orbit. A small rock with a mass of 0.2 kilos is attached to the lower end of a long string and moves in the horizontal circle over the radius of 0.6 meters. If the speed of the rock is a constant 2 meters per second, what angle does the string make with the vertical? Okay. Hold on. Um, okay. Well, we weren't given enough information here to have... Um, geometry on our side. I was like, wait a minute. If we have the radius here, put this radius here, do we have either the length of the, of the string or the actual height here? Uh, if we do, we can skip past the forces and go straight to the angle. Um, unfortunately for us, we were not so uh, blessed. Uh, so we have to actually do this out a long way. Um, so we have a... Um, Let's see here. We're going to have a centripetal force pulling inwards. 
So that means we have, right? Yeah. So we have a centripetal force is equal to mv squared on r. Um, we have enough information for that. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and punch the number straight in and find what, uh, what that number is. 0.2 times point s no, uh, velocity of 2 squared divided by 0 0.6 squared. All right? No, just 0 0.6. Uh, 0 0.2 times 2 squared divided by 0 0.6. This works out to 4 thirds or uh, 1.3. Um, okay, so now we have a force pulling in this way. Um, we have a force, so we know what this force is. Um, we can find out that this is mg. This, this is our gravity here. Uh, so that is um, 0.2 times 9.8. 1.96 newtons. I don't know if I need that, but there we have it. Um, <laughs> so the tension in the rope here has to provide that has to provide this here. So this is our tension horizontal, and it has to counter this here. So this is our tension vertical. Um, <laughs> we don't actually need to know what the tension is, but we could calculate it from that. Um, what we actually need is the arctan of these two here, and that would provide which angle? Oh, for the P. don't draw that line there. Oh yeah, to show this game. Uh, so we have, um, <laughs> um, well, I suppose it'll be, well, let's see here, well, uh, okay. Huh, what oh, angle, yeah. Arc tan of TH divided by TV is equal to arc tan of 1.3 divided by 1.96 is 33.55. 33.55 degrees. I'll bet that 90 less that value is also one of the answers provided. 50. No, it's not. Huh. Well, I would have provided it, but it's not here. So that can't be the right answer. So 33 and a half must be the correct answer. All right? Yeah. Put a number that's pretty close, but he didn't provide it. So, I don't have to figure out for myself which one it is. He let me provide the right answer between the two of them. How kind. Um, so let's see here, back, back to this particular case. So just in case, we need it, right? Did I actually put, I just put a number much closer to 45. 1.3 divided by 1.96, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, we have this angle here. We have the small. We have a small force pulling in and a large force pulling up. So it must be close. It must be closer to the axis than further away. So that means we need the small angle instead of the large angle. So that is indeed 33.55 degrees rather than the complement of 56. Point whatever. So this angle here. This is a 56 degrees here. And he didn't find that one, so yay. We don't have to worry about it then. A block with mass of 0.6 kilos is pulled from the is pulled from the bottom of a three degree ramp to the top. A distance of two meters along the surface of the ramp. How much work was done by gravity during this displacement of the block? Okay. Uh measure along the surface of the ramp. Well that's fun. We don't want to know that. We need to know this distance here. Um, let's try that, that arrow again. We need to know 
this value. We're told this one here. Um, so this is two meters. Um, the short angle would be sine of 30 degrees. So that is, let me guess, one half. Yep. So that is one meter. So it comes up one meter. Therefore, the work done by gravity is equal to mgh. Um, so that would be 0.6 kilos times 9.8 meters per second squared times the distance traveled is one meter. 9.8 times point times 0.6 is 5.88 uh, joules. So 5.9. So it's not 12. It's not 10. It's not 12. It's not 10. Question is now what is the sign? Well, I went up. So if it's going up, that means it's a work is equal to change in kinetic energy. If it's going up, it would have slowed down. Um, and since it's slowed down, that means that this is less than zero. So we pick the minus 5.9 joules. A small block with mass of 0.4 kilos is placed at rest against a compressed press spring that is attached to the wall. There's 18 joules of elastic potential energy stored in the spring. 18 joules. Okay, 18 joules stored. Uh, where's direction appointed? Horizontally. Okay. The spring is released and the block travels along the horizontal surface, leaving the spring behind. No potential energy is left stored in the spring after the block leaves. The block travels a distance of two meters along the surface at a speed nine meters per second. Was the after the block has traveled two meters along the surface, its speed is nine meters per second. What's kinetic energy? What's the kinetic friction? So it goes off that way. So we're told that energy initial is equal to eighteen joules, and it goes for some distance. At which point is we have an energy final, which is one half mv squared. So that is, um, we need point uh, two times eighty one, sixteen point two joules. Therefore, the work of friction is equal to 18 minus 16.2, 1.8 joules, which is equal to the force of uh, force of friction, mu normal mg, times distance traveled. Um, so mu is equal to 1.8 joules divided by mass of 0.4 kilograms times gravity 9.8 meters per second squared distance traveled 2 meters meters times meters meters squared meters squared per second squared times kilogram is a joule therefore all the units cancel out and we're left with a unitless number which is exactly what we need very good. 1.8 divided by begin 0. 0.4 times 9.8 times 2 is 0. 0.229. 0. 0.23. All right. Next question. A block with mass of uh, one half kilos released from the top of a vertical semicircular frictionless track that has a radius of two meters. Hey, what is the normal force that the track exerts on the block as the block slides through the bottom of the track? Okay. So the first thing we need is the velocity of the bottom track. So mgh is equal to one half mv squared. M's cancel. Uh, 
glossy. We are not going to go that far. Uh, glossy squared is equal to 2GH, or in this case, GR. Um, and then we need the force normal, so we have a, a normal force going up, we have a gravity pulling down, and together they must be force centripetal, right? Uh, yeah, force centripetal is equal to normal minus gravity. Um, <laughs> is equal to mv square on r. And this is why I did not take the square root of that. Uh, because I just need v square. Um, so normal is equal to mg plus m2g r divided by r. r is cancel. And so we find that this is 3 m G. So this thing is pulling three G's going through that through the bottom of the circle. Uh, or as it feels through G's. So we have three times mass one half times gravity nine point eight. Fourteen point seven newtons. Alright, next question. Two objects, one of mass m, the other two of m, are dropped from the top of a tall building. If there is no air resistance, when they hit the ground, both will have the same kinetic energy. No. Kinetic energy is equal to one half in, oh, yeah, one half mv squared. But kinetic energy in this particular case is not that particular question. They won't have, um, what they will have. Um, so they, they will have the same velocity when they get to the bottom and so Because they have the same velocity, but not the same mass the kinetic energy won't be the same Another way to look at that would be to be consider the potential energy from the top So it must be equal to m g h h is the same, but m is not and so their kinetic energy will not be the same So no not a The heavier one will have twice the kinetic energy of the light one Yes, because its potential energy is proportional to its mass. The heavier one will have four times the kinetic energy of the light one. No, because it's not proportional to mass squared. The heavier one will have half. No. Or a fourth. No. They all say the same thing. And this question is, is proportional, which was basically is power for proportionality. Um, so that's per, uh, power is zero, power is one, power is two. Uh, divide by one, so minus one and minus two. Uh, let's see here. A book with mass of two kilos is sliding along a rough horizontal surface. At point A, the block has a speed of six meters per second, and at point B, two meters per second. How much work has uh, been, was done on the block as it moved from A to B? Work is equal to change in kinetic energy. Kinetic energy uh, final minus kinetic energy initial. Uh, so that is equal to doo -doo -doo, one half m v final squared minus v initial squared. Uh, okay, so it's two kilos times a half, which is one. So we end up with six. Nope. 2 squared minus 6 squared. And that is 4 minus 36, better known as minus 32 joules. Plus 32 is here for your convenience to screw things up. Um, and the plus uh, 36 is for this for this square here the four the 40 don't know what that's about a block is pulled up the ramp whose surface is 30 degrees but the horizontal by a force that is uh, 50 newtons in direction of 70 degrees above the horizontal how much work is done by F 
has block travels to two mirrors along the surface of the ramp. Okay. Um, so work done by forces is equal to F vector dot D vector, also known as F D cosine theta between those two angles. Um, so we don't care about the we don't care about the fact that it's seven degrees of the horizontal. We care that it is in fact uh, this is the thirty is 40 degrees above the surface of this thing here, of the distance traveled. Uh, so that becomes 50 times, that's 50 newtons, times 2 meters, times cosine of 40 degrees. Uh, that's 100 cosine 40 degrees. 76.6 newtons, better known as the 77 joules. They're not newtons, newton meters, better called joules. Good gravy. I'm awake yet, aren't I? Good gravy. Uh, 50 newton, the 50 joules is for people who grab for the 50. Um, I'll wager that there's an answer for 30. That's the 87. I'll wager there's an answer for the 70. And that's the 34. And I don't know what the 64 is about. But it's only not that. Do, 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 do. A 0.14 kilogram baseball is dropped from rest from height of two meters above the ground. What is the magnitude of those momentum just before it strikes the, the ground if we neglect air resistance? Okay, momentum is equal to mv. Um, we need the velocity, so that is m this here. Velocity. We need the velocity. That would be we have the height, uh, distance traveled. We need the velocity. Uh, square root of g h. Right? No, wrong. V squared is equal to the square is equal to v naught zero squared plus 2g h. So there's our velocity there, square root of 2g h. There we go. That'll produce an answer. So we have square root, uh, nope, no square roots, 0.14 square root of 2 times 9.8 times 2. Answer, 0.876 point eighty seven six uh, kilogram meter per second also known as point eight seven six noon seconds um, point eight eight this year do 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 a car car a mass of two uh, metric tons is traveling east Car B with uh, one and a half metric tons is traveling north. The cars collide together immediately after the collision. The wreck of mass of uh, let's see, no, that's uh, two metric tons and three metric tons it is ma mass of five metric tons. It's traveling 37 degrees north of east with a speed of six meters per second. Uh. During the collision, the friction force from the road can be neglected. What is the speed of A just before the collision? All right. Look at that typo. <laughs> Forward slash instead of backslash. Whatever. Oh, hmm. He forgot. He left an answer for us. I'll oh, bet it's this one right here. Oopsie doodles. Um, well, let me work it out. So we have car come this way, car come this way, wreckage go that way. Um, 
37 degrees north of east. Here's our 37 degrees. Uh, okay. Uh, what is the speed of A? Uh, a is this one here. So we have that MV is equal to MV. Um, so that means that V, the one we're looking for, is equal to, so V initial, V final, V initial, initial, there we go, is equal to the total mass divided by the mass of the little, of the just the, of my car A, times the velocity final in the x direction. If you use the six meters, we end up with this bit here, and then we'd be mixing angles again. And this is going vertical, this is going horizontal, and we'd be mixing directions and we get the wrong answer. So we need the V final with the uh, four fifths component of 37 degrees. All right, ooh. Uh, so all the thousands cancel each other. The kilograms cancel each other. And we have five halves times our velocity is six times the, the uh, cosine of five, uh, four fifths. Fives cancel each other. Two cancels with uh, that two there. And we're left with, hey, look at that. As predicted, 12 meters per second. Oopsie doodles, no answers, huh? It looks like all the answers. A block with mass 1.98 kilograms is sitting at rest at a horizontal surface, but with mass of 2 kilos, 0.02 kilos, jump horizontal with a speed of 300 meters per second. Bullet strikes the block and becomes embedded in it. If the kinetic uh, friction force between the bullet and block is 6 newtons, what distance does the block travel? What? The kinetic friction between the block and the surface again is six newtons. What distance does the block travel after being struck by a bullet? Okay. So first we need a velocity after impact, right? Yeah. Yeah. Boy. So we have MV is equal to MV initial final. Uh, so that is point and we need the V final so we have that would be to do uh, 0.02 kilos times this initial velocity of 300 meters per second divided by uh, big M of oh look at that when you add this number to that number it's exactly two kilos how kind kilograms cancel kilograms 0.02 divided by 2 is, uh, let's see here, uh, that should be 1 one hundredth times 3. I think this comes out to 3 meters per second. Let me double check that. 0.02 divided by 2 is indeed 0.01 times 300 is 3. Yep. So we have initial velocity of 3 meters per second. A final velocity after impact of three meters per second. Uh, we have a force applied and then a distance that it travels. Okay, um, so one half m v squared is equal to um do 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 f d f d yep. Nothing else, just FD. Um, so now we can get our distance. So we have one half times two times the velocity of three squared divided by force of six newtons. Uh, so this will work out to distance. One half of two is one, three is uh, nine, nine over six which I, uh, let's see here, is three over two is one and a half meters. A three kilogram block is sliding at a speed 
is sliding with a speed of 4 meters per second. Okay, horizontal function surface, it collides with a 2 kilogram block that is initially at rest and the two blocks stick together. Okay, what is the kinetic energy of the combined object immediately after the collision? Alrighty, so just out of useful curiosity, we have our initial kinetic energy is one half, mass is three kilograms times four squared. So initially we are looking at 16, eight times three is 24. Twenty-four. Our initial energy is twenty-four joules, and then they stick together. So we end up with two, two collides with two kilograms significantly rest. Okay, so we have uh, three times four. We start with twelve newton seconds of, of momentum, um, and that has to be equal to five kilograms velocity so velocity is equal to 12 on 5 2.4 meters per second now you can work out the energy 1 half of 5 kilos alright yeah times 2.4 squared. Squared times five divided by a half is 14.4 joules. Oh, look at that. So the uh, collision did uh, did minus 9.6 joules of work. Uh, that sounds like an awful lot of def deformation to me to make them stick page 5 block A has mass of 2 kilos and block B has mass of 4 kilos there's a light spring between them the two, force, the two blocks are forced together, compressing the spring. The two blocks are released from rest and move in opposite directions on a horizontal friction surface, leaving the spring behind. If block B has a speed of 3 meters per second after the leaving the spring, how much potential energy will store in the spring when it's compressed between the blocks? Alright. So we have block A and block B going in opposite directions with some uh, momentums which are equal and opposite to each other. Um, so we, are, we need to find out what, that, what this other block is doing. We have uh, four kilos times three, four kilograms times 3 meters per second is equal to 12 newton seconds. The other block has 2 kilos and some velocity. Therefore, the velocity is equal to 6 meters per second. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So now we have to figure out where that kinetic energy came from. So now we have 1 half mv squared plus one half of mv square, one, one, two, two. Uh, so that is, let's see here, one half of, let's see here, four times three squared, plus one half of two times six squared. Uh, two times nine plus 36 is 54 joules. Block B, let's see here, 18. Um, M, 
Block A has mass of two kilos, block B has three kilos. They're moving on a horizontal friction surface, and initially block A is traveling to the right with a speed of eight meters per second, and block B is moving to the left with a speed of two meters per second. The two blocks collide and stick together because elastic collisions are much harder than any elastic collisions, and, are, and the equations that for such are not provided. After collision, which are the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the combined object? So A, let's see your block A, do, 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 do. to the right, eight meters per second, uh, two kilos. And block B to the left, three kilos and two. So we have 16 newton seconds to the right and 6 newton seconds to the left, which means that our final is 10 newton seconds of momentum to the right. So you immediately scratch these two off. Uh, combined mass is 5 kilos, which means that this is equal to 2 meters per second. A small car collides head on with a large truck. Which of the following statements is, is correct? Small truck undergoes a greater magnitude of momentum change than the large truck. Large truck undergoes a greater magnitude of momentum change than the small truck car. Both vehicles undergo the same magnitude of change in momentum. This is correct. So what we're looking at here is that P initial is equal to P final. So if we have P1 initial plus P2 initial has to be equal to P1 final minus plus P2 final. You change you get that together so that you have a change, you'll find that um, change in P1 is equal and opposite to change in P2. Basically by move by exchanging um, these here. By trading these around you find that this is true. So the change in magnitude is equal and opposite and if they're equal and opposite then the magnitude must be the same. A hockey puck with mass of 2 kilos, 0.2 kilos, is traveling north at a speed of 15 meters per second. A dollar star forward with his puck Hits the puck with his hockey stick after being and after being hit, the puck is traveling with a speed south with a speed of 25 meters per second. So it's going this way at 15 meters per second, and then it goes this way at 25 meters per second. What is the magnitude of the impulse that the stick applied to this puck? So impulse is J is equal to change in momentum is equal to m v final minus v initial. Uh, we have 0.2 kilos times v final, 25, we'll call that positive, minus this one going in the other direction, minus the negative 15. All right, uh, so that becomes a plus and this goes away. So that's a five, uh, 20, 40 times a fifth, um, so that would be 8 noon seconds. Yeah, magnitude of impulse. Oh, <laughs> Technically, none of these, because these are all the wrong unit. Newton meter is a joule. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's probably looking for A. Let me check that. 25 plus 15. Yep. He's looking for A. Let's let's see what he wrote in, wrote, wrote in his answers. That's uh, that's a boo boo there. Oopsie doodles. 
Um, I'm curious what he wrote for that. Um, exam two for 20. Uh, 20 answers. Preview it. Yep, you did. <laughs> Oopsie doodles. Uh, so technically speaking, none of those answers are correct because they all have the wrong units. It's a Newton second, not a Newton meter. But Dr. Ford was looking for answer A because he is, uh, the answer is indeed Newton, 8 Newton seconds, which is exactly what uh, he is expecting for his answer there. All right. Uh, that is the in I believe that is in the exam two it is.